Welcome to Hunger and Thirst for Righteousness. This is the introduction. It's called the Mashiach Experience. And so uh, we'll be getting to the kind of theme of this class, the big deal, the big situation surrounding this class, okay? And so pretty much when you read the Bible, we've talked about the word yam before. That word yam means day. Every time you read in Genesis 1 where it says day one, the actual translation is yam one, okay? Yam can mean day. It can mean um year it can mean month it can mean hour it just means time period now the word epoch also means yam that also it also means time period now every epoch or day is has specific events associated with that day so just like we know that day one is associated with the creation of light we know day two is associated with uh, the expanse being created. We understand that day three is associated with the solid land and the produce coming up from the ground well, in this fourth class, the events that surround this is the Mashiach experience. So that's the experience of having the anointing of God. That is not something, you know, there have been people who have been chosen to carry this anointing. And we've talked about people who've been chosen to carry the covenant of Yahweh. But this is the first time we're going to come into true leadership true godly anointed leadership to be kings and leaders of these people in which we know that yeshua is called the king of kings and the lord of lords now we're going to get into some of these words like mashiach and christ and so we can understand better about this experience because the truth is if you've gotten to this point not only have you already been exp having these experiences, so I'm about to make it clear to you the experiences you've had that are of his tribulation, but they're also experiences you're 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 going to have. It's it's just what it's it's quite literally what it is. Is it's to have this anointing, to have to come to this level of revelation, to come to this level of 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 uh, relationship with God. It comes with certain experiences. Like we just talked about how the word epoch, there are certain events that surround certain epochs. In the same way, these are the experiences that, that surround uh, the reception of Mashiach in your heart. So we'll get into it. We'll get into it. We'll get into it. We'll get into it. We got some good things today. So it says this. It says, this is the word Mashiach, okay? Also, clearly can also read as messiah mashiach messiah okay those those words are equal but what does mashiach actually mean because we know we, we well we don't we may not know but many people call jesus yahusha mashiach which really is in english jesus christ okay but mashiach what does it mean it means it means anointed anointed one of the messiah messianic prince of the kings of israel of the king of Israel, the high priest of Israel, of Cyrus, of the patriarchs, is anointed kings. Anointed kings. So this is very important because we are going to deal with people who are going to be anointed as kings. And people who are going to be anointed with his anointing in the Old Testament. But we will soon realize that their experiences with that anointing was not different than the anointed one, Jesus Christ. And so this class is very important. It, honestly, it's, it's very securing for your endurance, which we know that something that we're supposed to be coming firm in this class is perseverance. I think this is very important to become knowledgeable about the Mashiach experience, because if you don't really understand the things that you should be going through and the things that you should not be going through, there are things that you should be going through with, with this anointing. And there are things that you should not be going through with this anointing. It means you're not operating the anointing at all if you're dealing with, cer with certain things. And so we will get into it, a lot of great things. So uh, here we go. Here we are. We have David because David is a, is a main character of this time period. He is a main character. You understand that we're going to start off with Samuel. But Samuel is going to be the one who ends up anointing David. So this whole, this whole I'm going to say 70% of this class... It's centered around the person that anointed David, David himself, and his son Solomon. That's about 70% of this class, and this is all about the anointing. That's what it's about. 2 Samuel 23, 1 and 2, it says, Now these are the last words of David. David, the son of Jesse, declares, The man who was raised on high declares, The anointed of the God of Jacob and the sweet psalmist of Israel, the Spirit of the Lord spoke by me, and his word was on my tongue. 
So there are some things that are important about this passage because this is the revealing that, uh, that David, he is literally, his title is literally, <laughs> he's, uh, it's like a, a um, you know, when they have WWE and they're announcing the person's coming out of the rest. So this is his, his announcing. This is what, how, how God introduces who he is. The son of Jesse. The man who was raised on high. That's what most people don't understand about David. He was raised on high. He was raised on high. Yes, he was in flesh. It was like you, you, uh, uh, like mine and yours. Well, this was a man that's, uh, that ascended in the kingdom of God. It was a man that was ascended and was raised on high by God. It says he, he says he's the anointed of the God of Jacob. That word anointed right there is actually in Hebrew, Mashiach, the Mashiach of the God of Jacob. And so we understand that when we are reading this, we are coming to understand that we are dealing with an individual that is operating in the Mashiach or the anointing or operating in Christ. And we're talking about this in a second. In a second. So David's experiences are not the experiences of a fleshly man. His experiences and his tribulations are are experiences and tribulations of those who find themselves in Christ. First John 2, 27 says, As for you, the anointing which you receive from him abides in you, and you have no need for anyone to teach you. But as his anointing, it teaches you about all things, and is true, and is not a lie. And just as it, just as it has taught you, you abide in him. So what's important about this? Because we just read about David where he says he's the one who's anointed by God. We understand all the way into the New Testament, we're still talking about this anointing. You understand that the desire to receive the Holy Spirit is a, is a reception of anointing, of being anointed. And as for you, the anointing which you receive from him abides in you. And you have no need for anyone to teach you. Now listen, that, this is important. Because there's a big difference between the life of someone who was anointed and the life of someone who is not anointed. The life of someone who, has, who was anointed is taught by that anointing in their heart. It's, taught by, it's literally taught by God. literally taught by God. His anointing teaches you about all things. What did, what did Christ literally say about the Holy Spirit when he comes that he would he would teach you all things? The desire for a Holy Spirit is a desiring for the anointing of God. But it's a great prayer and something you should really be desiring in your heart. Uh, Christ literally said, if, if, uh, if you, if you parents being evil, you know, if your child asks for a rock, you're not going to give them a snake, you know, you give your kids what you think they want. How much more will God give the Holy spirit to those who ask? And as we're going through this class, you need to be asking him for his, for his spirit. I need your Holy spirit. It's so interesting because even this class is associated as fourth class. The fourth appointed time is Pentecost. That's when the Holy spirit was given to the people. This class is about receiving that anointing. It's about recognizing that anointing, not only in yourself, but also in other people to recognize when this anointing is somewhere. Because that's what it says in this Bible. It says, do not touch my anointed ones and do them no harm. Yes, you shouldn't do anyone any harm. But I'm trying to tell you, it's sevenfold. It's like he said he will avenge Cain sevenfold. Most people don't understand that Cain was talking directly to God. Yes, he sinned. Yes, he did what he did. But you also have to understand that Cain himself was not a regular, regular, regular individual. He was a, a prophet of God that was talking to God. That God was talking to him and was teaching him and was trying to get him to repent and was active in his journey. But I think this is very important to understand. Anointing, you're also coming to understand, and we're getting to the second, 
the name Jesus Christ. From the Greek, Christos, of things, anointing to be used as ointment, of persons, anointed, the Messiah, the Christ. This is literally what Christ means. Christ literally means anointed. When you say Jesus Christ, you're saying Jesus the anointed. But what we have to understand about Christ, because he is Christ, he is the, what you're not understanding is that he is the anointing. That's, that's who he is. And there is no other anointing. He is the anointing. We have to understand that people, anyone who's anointed has a measure of him or by his grace has all of him all of the anointing, but he is the complete, the completeness of, of the anointing of God. He is the anointing. And that's also what we're seeing in the gospels is he's walking through and he's healing people and he's imparting gifts. He's doing all these different things. He's, he, he's imparting gifts even to his disciples to be able to cast out demons. He's doing all these things, right? That is the image of the anointing. This is, he is giving you an image of what it means to come across the anointing of God, to have an experience with the anointing of God. Now, I love this because it's going to bring everything together about what it means to be in Christ. And we're going to read a couple of verses to say in Christ, just to... You know, like we like to confirm with the word of God the things he's talking about. Second Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. The old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. We have to understand something. In Christ means to be in the anointing. You cannot be in the anointing of God and be the same old creature. It's not possible. The anointing has an image. The anointing has its own life. Christ said he's the truth, the way, and the life. The anointing is the way. The anointing is the truth. The anointing is the life. You cannot have the anointing and still be going your own way. It's not possible. You can't have the anointing and still be living by uh, different standards of reality than what this word of God is is. is is uh portraying it's not it's not possible you cannot have this anointing and still be clinging to your old life because it already has a life <laughs> and it's not going to change its life for your old one in the flesh and this is just a quick one another re reaffirming through peter Greet one another with a kiss of love. Peace be to all all who are in Christ. And he, so we understand when he is really, when he is saying this, he's saying peace be to all those who are in the anointing, those who abide in him, who abide in his word. Because we understand also that this, this anointing, it says this anointing teaches you to abide in him. The anointing teaches you to obey Christ, to stay in his word. Peter specifically writing and saying, peace be to all those who abide in this anointing. Peace be to all those that abide in this anointing. Now, once again, because we understand that to abide in him is to abide in the anointing. So now we're putting all these things together is that the reality is that we cannot be in the spirit. We cannot be in the Holy Spirit. We cannot be in Mashiach. We cannot be in Christ without abiding in his word. It's not possible. First John 2, uh, 4 to 6, it says, the one who says I have come to know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar 
and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, in him the love of God has truly been perfected. By this we know that we are in him. The one who says he abides in him ought himself to walk in the same manner as he walked. Now why this is important? Because once again, this, this lesson is called the Mashiach experience. Why? Because he's trying to tell you something. If you say you abide in him, if you say you are in Christ, you're saying you are in Mashiach. Well, guess what? Your experience of life should not be different than the experience of Yeshua, the experience of Jesus Christ. It should not be different. Because what he said, the one who says he abides in him ought himself to walk in the same manner as he walked. Which means, guess what? I'm, I'm going to do the same things that he did. That's what it means to abide. The anointing does not change. It has no need to change. And I love this because even as we're going through this, you're going to realize with David, you're going to see how many, how many oh men that he really had a Mashiach experience. And if you are truly <laughs> in Christ, you're also going to have these experiences. Let's keep going. Hebrews 4.15, it says this. Hebrews 4.15. It says, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize, sympathize with our weaknesses, but the one who has been tempted in all things as we are yet without sin. So what's he saying? He's literally saying that we are going to have, we're going to go through the same temptations that Jesus went through. And he went through the same temptations that we go through. Sometimes we will love to believe that we are lives are such an anomaly with the things that we go through. But I'm trying to tell you, that's what's keeping you from actually being in Christ. When you accept that my life experiences are not different, they're not uh, um, estranged from what Jesus himself went through or what other people who were in Christ are going through. When you begin to believe that, Life opens up to you. You become a little bit less depressed. You become a little more open to share the things you're going through. You become a little bit less in shame. You become a little bit less in fear of what's going on with you. Because when you fellowship, when you open up, and when you see clearly that you are not going through anything that other people are not going through. More confirming words of this reality that we are going through the things that Christ went through. Because the anointing told us this. Matthew 10, 24-25, a disciple is not above his teacher, nor a slave above his master. It's enough for the, the disciple that he become like his teacher and the slave like his master. If they have called the head of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they malign the members of his household? He is literally telling you, you are not going to experience something different than I experienced. One of the greatest lies I've ever heard is that Jesus went through everything he went through so that you don't have to go through them. That's not the truth. If you are a true disciple, a true follower of him, he is literally telling you that if they call me demon possessed, if they call me demonic, what do you think they're going to say about you? They're going to say you're demon possessed and you're demonic. That's what they're going to say. And I think this is very important to understand is that the confirmation of being in Christ is going through the same tribulations that he went through in the Gospels. That is literally should end up being your joy. It should end up being your honor. It should end up being your confirmation of perseverance. Every time I see, every time I hear something that I saw in this word of God, that those who were also in Mashiach, because notice also when it talks about Mashiach, when we just read the definition, it went back to the patriarchs. So those in Genesis, the, the, those patriarchs in Genesis, those who were anointed in the Old Testament, uh, the things that Christ went through, the things his disciples went through. If you see any of your life experiences in them, 
you're in the right place. But there are things that they did not experience and things that they did not go through. And that's likely because when you're going through things that you cannot find that other people are going through in this word of God, it's likely because you're not operating in the anointing. This Bible is encouraging to those who operate in the anointing. It's not encouraging to those who do not operate in anointing. In, in elementary terms, what I'm saying is it is encouraging to those who walk in the spirit and it's not encouraging to those who walk in the flesh. That's reality. Let's keep it going. We have more confirming words from, from the anointing. We're almost done here. Here we go. John 15, 18 and 21. If the world hates you, you know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, be, uh, because of this, the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a slave is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. But all these things they would do to you for my name's sake, because they do not know the one who sent me. Now, this is important because what he's saying, he says, you guys who are my disciples, you guys who carry my anointing. If the world hates you, he says, first of all, don't think you're special. If the world hates you, no, no, it hated me first. I went through everything first. I went through these experiences first. From the very beginning, I've went through these experiences. So don't think that this is just about you. No, you are coming into my life experiences. If you were of the world, the world would love its own because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world. Because of this, the world hates you. Remember, he said that he doesn't listen. This is truly the voice of Yahweh when you hear this. When he says, remember, because that's something that he, he just says often, every once in a while. Remember this. Remember Miriam. Remember Lot's wife. Now he's saying, remember the word that I said to you. A slave is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep your, they will also keep your word. But all these things they would do to you for my name's sake, because they do not know the one who sent me. Important things right here that he's confirming to you that you should experience the hate I experienced. You're going to experience the persecution I experienced. You're going to experience his life. Okay, next one here. It says, but it says, okay, First Peter 5, 9, but resist him, talking about the devil, firm in your faith, knowing the same experience of suffering are being accomplished by your brethren who are in the world. Now, why is this important? Because once again, you cannot be so foolish as to believe that you are the only one going through the things that you're going through. You're not the only one. He's literally saying that, that, you, that you should find comfort in knowing that you are going through the same tribulations that everyone else, that your, your brothers and sisters around the world are also going through. And this is an important thing to becoming firm in your faith, because when you think that you're going through something that you should not be going through, that's when it gets hard. I'm telling you the truth about this. Is that's when people quit on their journey is because they do not believe that they are going through things. They do not believe that they are going through things that they should be going through. They are genuinely confused. They're genuinely uh, distraught because they're like, why am I going through these things? But he's literally telling you that it should make you firm in your faith to understand that you are not going through anything 
that others around you are not going that they're not going through the others who are also in that anointing are not going through let that be your comfort and part of the issue i'm trying to tell you this fellowship is a big part it's a big part of this it's a big part of this the reality is if you want to become comfortable in your faith, you also have to be honest about the tribulations you're going through. If you're not honest about those tribulations, no one can speak up and confirm to you that guess what? I've went through the same things. If you're not honest about the tribulations, about loving God more than your wife and your children, no one can speak up and say, you know what? I've had the same, those same tribulations of Abraham as you. If you're not honest about the tribulation of not going, not being in the place that seems obviously the wealthy and fruitful place to be, like Isaac, but going to the desert because you believe that's where God wants you to be, it's, no one else can can speak up and say, you know what, I've had that same experience in Christ. So that fellowship and honesty is so important. Because it, it is what will preserve you on your journey when you speak up and you're honest about your tribulations. Now I want to talk about this because even as you read this, some of you guys will, you're, st you're still saying to yourself, well, Mashiach Christ, there's only one Mashiach, there's only one Christ. I'm not going to have those experiences. Even though the, the North just told you you're going to have the same experiences I have, well, I'm going to give this to you black and white. I'm going to give it to you black and white. First Corinthians 15, 20 through 24 says, But each in his own in his own order. Christ the first fruits, after that those who are Christ at his coming. Then comes the end when he hands over the kingdom to the God and the Father, uh, to the God and Father, when he has abolished all rule and all authority and power. And so this is important. Why? Because we're talking about the resurrection. It says the first resurrection are those who are Christ the first fruits. The second resurrection are those who are Christ with the apostrophe of ownership. But what's important about it, it says Christ the first fruits with an S. That's multiple. I'm not going to sit here and say that you're not reading the Bible correct if you don't understand that there are multiple Christ. But I am saying today's the day to understand that there are multiple Christ. There, that Christ is the ultimate, like I said, he is the overall anointing. He is what that is. He is the perfect example. He is the leader. He is the first of even those first fruits. But this Bible will also tell you that there's 144,000 other beings that God looks at and considers Christ, that they're all Christ. Revelation 14, 3 to 4. And they sang a new song before the throne and for the four living creatures and the elders, and no one could learn the song except the 144,000 who have been purchased from the earth. These are the ones who have not been defiled with women, for they have kept themselves chaz. These are these are the ones who follow the land wherever he goes. They have been purchased among men as first fruits to God into the land. We just read that Christ the first fruits these are those and so it's destined for 144,000 other people to go through the exact same life walk the exact same way and live in the exact same truth as we as we saw Jesus Christ do and believe it or not even though you, some of you guys still may may not believe you're that you're that rare, but if you're at this level of advance, you are that rare. And it is possible, but it's also something that if you don't believe, it can never be you. And so, with that being said, that's the end of the introduction, the Mashiach experience. I hope that you're coming to understand what we uh, uh, this class is all about. The things you're going to um, you're going to read about your experiences if you are truly a Mashiach and if you haven't had these experiences yet you're going to hear about the experiences to come and what you should be looking for which you should be looking forward to
and make sure make sure that we're not running away from the anointing. And so, the Mashiach experience, introduction, hunger thirst for righteousness. We will uh, move on, and we have quite a journey to go through together. Have a good one.